it's the basement, Sambonani, um, Tomelang, Da Molweni, um, welcome again to the Revolution Basement. Um, my name is Mtande, um, on a choice. Um, so, um, upon releasing um, the trailer for the platform, the introduction, I've been pondering trying to figure out what could serve as the best topic to tackle going forward that is gonna sort of set the tone and give you an idea or a taste of what um, the, 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 the platform is all about and how I tackle these these topics right so upon a lot of um, deliberation upon a lot of pondering and introspection um, i decided that the best topic to tackle um is ego right ego so why ego um i feel like the, the concept of ego um, ties in a lot of things um, your your battle with your with your ego sort of defines your whole life and it ties in everything how you are with yourself how you are with others socially and even spiritually I mean ties in everything um, the concept of ego so it's very important that we we, we we unpack that that whole concept and show how important it is in 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 in, in our lives basically so what is ego um, the most basic definition I can give you of ego is what we identify ourselves as. When you are told to, to introduce yourself, that which comes to mind and you communicate it as yourself, that is your ego right um so the ego the thing about the ego is and the dangers of it is that you can go through life not knowing that you are going through life through the ego and not your real self right um, there's your real self that you were born as and then there is what you identify yourself as which is your ego which is made by experiences that you have gone through so let me break this down right um, when you are born right um, you are born as a complete being see when you are an infant that is your most complete that you will ever be the different ideologies ideologies and beliefs 
that you may have concerning what you were before you were conceived and 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 born to each his own i'm not here to 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 convince you of anything i'm concerning that right but there are universal constants right just as the atom um 90% of the atom is made up of just empty space it's still one atom um but the the protons neutrons and electrons of the of the atom form less than 5% of the entire atom also the observable material universe the stars galaxies planets suns only form plus or minus definitely less than 5% of the entire cosmic space the rest of the cosmic space of of the cosmic space is dark matter and dark energy something that is immaterial that we cannot touch so in the same vein your physical body only makes up less than 5% of your entire being hence it's believed in other in other in other cultures in other ideologies that you have these different bodies um, your astral body your ethereal body your causal body um, um but all in all what i'm trying to say is my point is when when you are when you've just been born that's where you are most that's where you are most complete right all these different aspects of yourself all these different bodies by which you interact with all of reality are still in close proximity to each other as you are this baby and they are still feeding off each other right they, they these different aspects of yourself then start receding as you grow because now as as this infant and this and as this um physical being you start now being defiled by your by your diet the things you eat unclean spaces and the environment in which you are growing in these other parts of yourself then start receding as a baby you are complete you have both your light and dark sides because you are a complete being you are not one thing or the other you are this whole complete being that has both traits and um, characteristics and components that are light that are deemed good and traits components and characteristics that are deemed bad and dark forming this wholesome being right right so how 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 ego develops is the moment you are born you are given a name a surname um the family that you parents that have given birth to you um the family in which you are born in um a community that you are born in that forms part of your in what you develop to call your your id yourself the i the second part of what you identify as yourself um is developed through experiences more especially the first two years of your life and from two to seven those experiences and all those things that happened to you and your whole relationship with your pa- your with your parents and and so forth those are what shape you or shape the ego that you're gonna identify yourself as right and 
people sometimes refer to the ego as your false self. Why is that so? This is because you identify yourself as something that you are not born as, but it was molded and created and made by experiences. Right? So, let me make a, an example. You were born, you were an infant, you start growing up, right? And the when 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 you are when you are requested to introduce yourself, right? You're gonna give a name, say name, and where you grew up. The second part of your introduction is gonna go into describing a personality. I am such and such a person, right? And that personality is nothing either than the experiences that you have gone through that have tattooed themselves into the psyche such that you such such that that such that they form traits and characteristics that you identify as yourself. Right? Um so an example, a clear example that I can give is if someone um, grew up, right, and they were like in primary or in grade R, but when they were still young and they were subjected to being bullied, like the schoolyard bully, right? And this person then mustered enough courage and strength to stand up for, 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 for themselves. And they fought this bully, right? And they fought back and they won. They, have, they then go on to be involved in other fights, which they go on to, to, to win, right? This then starts creating a character and a trait that says, no, I'm a fighter. Uyozuve, abandu, besiti, and Right? This is a character and a trait that has been developed by a person through experiences who was involved in fights and they won. Right? They have then gone on to identify themselves as a fighter. I'm a fighter and then Zwanjal. Um though <laughs> though in adulthood that might manifest in <laughs> and escalate into something else <laughs> where now <laughs> the different modes of fighting are different. Where now we tap into the dark arts. <laughs> Fly by night, <laughs> matters of the broom. <laughs> anyway, don't mind me. Um, don't mind me. Um, I couldn't resist. Um, the, the 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 point I'm trying to make is, it's only it's mostly experiences that form an ego and what we identify as ourselves. Another component may be the shadow self, right? And some elements of your true self, your true self that you were born as also form this ego. But mostly, in, especially in people who are not aware of what the ego is, who are not aware of themselves and who have not done the, pop, the proper in, introspection and, 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 development and an awareness of themselves they 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 will mostly identify themselves as this false self right and that's dangerous because it's really not your true self 
if 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 the experiences that that was so that was so important in your development and that was so substantial such that they tattoo themselves in your psyche if you delete those what is left it makes you think you identify yourself as this character but this character was developed by external factors and things that happen to you right outside of that who are you it becomes now a scary a scary thing to 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 to, to fathom and understand right another example i can give that can make this thing clearer is if if for an example um you take two identical twins mind you identical twins are really identical to the level of the dna this is basically one person this is one this is basically one being that is born into two bodies it's one thing basically even at the dna level right so if you take these identical twins and you separate them right and one grows up in grows up maybe as a closer person here in the eastern cape you take one and they you send them to maybe KZN where they're gonna grow up as a Zulu as a Zulu person right and then you give them time these people develop and they grow and then maybe at the age of 18 or 25 or even 30 years you 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 you, you bring them together and then you you then interview investigate and study them right um one thing's for sure one thing is certain is that what you're gonna find are two different personalities two different egos remember this was one these were identical twins meaning it's more or less the same person but due to different environments different circumstances different um, households in which they grew up in different experiences that um, they have lived through these all have shaped this same being and has given rise to two different distinct egos and personalities when these now when these two when these twins start now introducing themselves you're gonna get two different descriptions and they will be adamant that this is who they are based off of this ego that has been shaped by the experiences that they've gone through again, again i ask is then the ego and the personality a real thing if it's dependent upon things that happen to you external factors really 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 what we identify ourselves as is not a real thing and you will you will get people who are so so fixated with their ego self 
even in their relationships and interactions with other people socially they will be so stuck on telling you that I'm such and such a person and I cannot change even when this this character that they are playing is not conducive to being in relationships it's not conducive socially I'm just like this I was made like this you know forgetting that this is just a character but you can you can put this thing down you can you can you can you can you know you don't, don't take yourself that seriously that we must now endure toxicity from you because you are playing this character that you do not want to um you want you don't want to outgrow and 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 transcend ego is not a real thing it's a it's a it's a facade it's something that you create it's something that is created within you by the environment if that is so is it then a real thing because the problem is we people who are not self aware and actualized identify ourselves as that as the ego that's what we consider ourselves to be and that's fragile because it's not a real thing there's something that you were born as outside of what was created by the environment right um so it's important that you do the necessary work in our work to be able to separate this false self from the real self right is very important so all in all um what i'm saying if i'm saying anything um it's important to be able to to be readily able to differentiate between the manufactured self the ego from our true inner self that is very important right and the best way to differentiate and distinguish between the false self and the true self is i'm going to go back to the example that i just gave of a bully and this kid right school yard bully um we are still young we are in primary or grade art or whatever um there's this kid who's slightly older than others is aggressive he, he bullies the other kids and and then he beats them up and he takes their things and their toys and whatever um until he meets this kid right um and the best way to differentiate between a trait that is that is that is um not manufactured is the first time that this kid is exposed and is exposed to this situation where he is about to get picked on and be beaten by this kid by this bully the first time that this thing happens um this kid does not have any reference right but in not having that reference he has this inner strength that grants him the ability right and the bravery to say not me i will not tolerate being bullied and victimized right this then shows a a, a trait that is from the inner self because at that time there was no reference of saying no uh, i'm going to win here um it might have well 
have happened that he also gets beaten up hard by this bully and he loses this fight um but he masters enough inner strength to to stand up for himself fight back and win now that is an inner and that, that that is a true characteristic of this being versus a case where after having won this fight this kid um is involved in other fights where he wins also these fights right and in some cases he's also the aggressor and he also starts fights now because now as he wins these fights it starts reinforcing a character of identifying himself as a fighter you know this is now different from how it started the fights have started a character now this kid now identifies himself as a fighter because of having won these fights using inner and inner and inner knowing and an inner strength right and it's 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 important to know and be able to differentiate these these different these subtle subtle differences right because an inner strength a strength the trait of having inner strength does not have a label and a title it just simply means that you have the ability of whatever whatever life throws at you whatever obstacle you face you can master you can you can summon this inner strength to find a way to wiggle out of this um out of this obstacle that you are faced with that's an inner characteristic that's a, that's a, that's a characteristic of the inner self versus now you identifying yourself as a fighter because you have won fights and you also now start fight starting fights and beating people up and so forth and identifying yourself as a fighter because you have never lost a fight you always win fights therefore you are a fighter now that's an ego thing that's a, that's a, that's the characteristic of the ego that's now your ego um that's now your ego pushing pushing you and controlling you right We've talked a lot about the the, the 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 ego, this manufacture itself. Um, I want to jump straight into the shadow self. What is the shadow self? Um, you will always hear in 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 self help self help books and other and other other platforms of this nature. Where they'll be talking about, or in books of psychology, where they'll talk about the shadow self. Um, so, in simple terms, what is the shadow self, and how does it? What role does it play? How does it fit into this whole co concept of the human psyche? Right. Remember, I I remember I remember I said um, that when you are born, you are born as this wholesome, complete being. Who, who exhibits both light and darkness, right? Who's both good and bad. Um, who has um, both desirable and undesirable traits that this person, that this being, that this complete being has, right? When you are born, as an infant 
you are complete right but as you start growing up now you have to get socialized and be molded to be able to 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 coexist with other with other people to coexist with your family to coexist with your peers and other kids who are your age right so as this kid develops right um i can make an example where um kids between the ages of about one one and a half two years all the way to three years right you have all these different types of kids they are they are they 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 are in one environment right and even at that age you can already see um you can already see levels of intellect in these kids you can already see the different levels of temperament in these kids right um already you're gonna see you're gonna start seeing kids that are very aggressive right you're gonna see kids that are slightly smarter than the others you're gonna see kids that are more reserved right um and that's not a problem these kids are were born that way essentially those are characteristics that they were born with but now it becomes a problem for characteristics such as aggressiveness, right? Because now this kid is beating up the other kids. This kid is hoarding all the toys, right? This then means now this kid has to be disciplined. The characteristics that this kid exhibits makes him or her subject to being disciplined because now he, um, he or she has to start start being socialized and being taught how to how to coexist with others right this is this this is not a problem for kids who exhibit slightly higher levels of things like um, IQ and intelligence but aggressiveness was now this kid beats other kids and he holds all the toys he wants to be in control he wants to he wants all the attention to himself and so forth this then places this kid in a position where the the, the, the caretakers and the parents have no choice but to start disciplining this kid at that age this kid can barely talk um he's still so young he can barely talk but his actions have incurred a reaction of being disciplined the shadow develops the shadow self in this kid develops because each time this kid exhibits this trait of aggressiveness he is met with a negative reaction from from the caretakers and the teachers and and and, and the parents right each time each time he starts being aggressive towards others he's met with he's met with a big high right each time this kid is being himself of exhibiting a, a trait and a characteristic that he was born with he is met with negativity right from that young age from the ages of one two all the way to three all the way to three and up to seven each time this kid has exhibited this characteristic of aggressiveness it's a big no he is he is even shouted at 
is even beaten when he exhibits this characteristic. Now, what's going to happen to this characteristic? Because as I've said, this is a characteristic from the true self, from this kid. It is not manufactured in any way. He was born that way. But now this characteristic is not favorable to being socialized and coexisting with others. So what happens to this characteristic? It, start, it starts receding to the back of the psyche, to the subconscious. It's still there. It cannot evaporate into thin air. It cannot disappear because it forms part of the being of this kid. So, mind you, this is not going to be the only characteristic that is going to be met with an unfavorable reaction. So, all these characteristics that this kid was born with and that were met with an unfavorable reaction, they, they, they all recede and form the shadow self in the background. They are still there. They are still part of this kid. But this kid has had to let go of these characteristics and divorce these characteristics because he does not want to be alienated. He does not want to always be the subject of being of being disciplined being the subject of be of big nose and eyes and being beaten because now because now he starts feeling small and start feeling different as if there's something wrong with him so he, in a, in a bid to be like other kids in a bid to fit in with with other kids this kid um, um, starts um, letting go of these characteristics that form part of who he is, hence forming a shadow self. Now, this kid is not aware that he's doing this thing. And the people that, are, that keep saying no to him do not know that this kid is developing this shadow self. It happens naturally as a consequence of growing up and being socialized right this forms the shadow self we all have the shadow self in varying degrees but most of us who are mostly affected by the shadow self are kids that were of a high temperament who are very very aggressive right and hence having this shadow self. Now, the shadow self is always there up until you are an adult. It's always there. How many stories have you heard of people doing something, right? It's them doing this thing. And then when they later, when they later come back to their senses, they'll tell you, I don't know what happened. It's unlike me. Meanwhile, it was him who was doing this thing. You, you, you get drunk. You do things that are out of correct. Even to yourself, you don't understand. How? How can? Who was that? It was you. But the shadow self took control because the ego lost control at that time. In that split second... In those, in, that, in those few moments of craziness, the, 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 the pretension, the manufactured self loses control. And the shadow self that was in the background, because this shadow self is made up of traits and characteristics that are inherent within you. So each time you are not in control, your true self is going gonna, is gonna to come to the fold, Right? And when this thing, when this happens, because you've suppressed this, 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 these characteristics and traits, when they finally, when they finally get a chance to showcase themselves to the third degree, to the tenth 
power because you have suppressed this part of yourself for so long. So each time it gets a chance to showcase itself, <laughs> you are in trouble. You do the most vile and out of character things because you have, you have suppressed this part of yourself for years, for decades, right? As you will hear people saying, I don't know what happened. When they either lose control through a fit of anger or maybe they were drunk, whatever the reason may be, but the moment they lose control of this manufactured self, when they, the moment they lose um, control of this face that they always wear, when they are in, 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 in the company of other people, the, 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 the shadow self comes to the fold. And it comes back with a vengeance because it has been suppressed for so long. You have been you have been hiding yourself from your true self. You have been hiding this part of yourself because it's unfavorable. It it it, it when you were young it incurred a negative reaction from all your elders and your other peers to a point where other kids did not want to play with you so you had to suppress this part of yourself forming this shard but because this shard is made up of characteristics that are from your true self it never goes anywhere but it has always been there waiting for an opportunity to pass through to pass through and show itself so that is the the shadow self and you will hear people saying that it's important to, to integrate your shadow self because it's made out of traits that, were, that you were born with, characteristics that form or that are from your true self. That's why you'll hear people saying that it's important to not hide not hide and suppress this part of yourself but try and integrate it into your personality making you a more wholesome um, personality and being right so um, for some it is believed that um, for the first couple of months to a year at a mere subconscious level the mother and the, and the infant share consciousness they are so connected that they share pieces of their consciousness right and should it happen that they are separated and this connection is severed um, for whatever reason um, maybe maybe the mother dies or moves to a different city for 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 work um, or she just abandons this baby for whatever reason but through this connection between the mother and an infant be broken this infant is going to grow up to be an adult who has abandonment issues, right? Um, and these are going to manifest as someone who, who, who is overly independent, right? They are so independent that they feel they don't need anyone. They go through life um, say, so solving their own problems and doing their own thing. And well, in the, in the black community, you're going to be given all sorts of names. Not knowing that it's a, it's a traumatic response. It's a psychological, um, it's a psychological imbalance 
and it's a, it's a traumatic response um, from someone who's suffering from abandonment issues, right? So all in all, all um, the there are there's there's always a psychological basis for why we are the way we are in adulthood, and it's likely that it was it was it was created in us by by um by things that happened and experiences that happened to us when we were infants and little babies and little kids see the first 7 years of 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 growth um whatever happens to you is so profound and it, it, it is always going to manifest in your life at later stages through the ego, right? And going further on this topic, I like to, I like to, I like to add spirituality in this topic because everything is connected to everything right everything is connected to everything um so in 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 biblical and religious scriptures they're gonna talk of the seven deadly sins right greed um, envy pride lust um, gluttony um, sloth vila and wrath anger right my whole thing is this is all psychology this is all psychology um there's a psychological basis why you you may exhibit um behaviors and traits and characters that are associated with the seven deadly sins how thing you be kwasa and how thing you turn as a lo? How am I demon? Um, all it is is there's a there's a, there's a psychological trauma, right? That is within your psyche that makes you live life through the ego, um, exhibiting these um deadly sins, one or more of these dead of these deadly scenes right um the thing about the the thing about we what we what we may call the seven deadly sins there are inherent um traits within us that we are born with that serve a people a, a that serve a purpose right um if 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 there's if there's if there's like one piece of food left right and there's like there's like um 10 of you vying for this piece of food right um for for at least for 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 the flesh part of you or the con the, the carnal part of you um it's 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 only right that you should feel you deserve or you want this piece for yourself instead of the 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 the, the, the nine others right so in this case you're going to tap into you're going to tap into the inherent part of you that has a bit of greediness, envy, and pride to say, no, you know what, guys? F y'all. That's my piece. Right? It's for survival. There's nothing wrong with that. Right? Um, going further, um, take lust for, for instance. We are all lustful. It's inherent, it's by design. 
it serves an evolutionary advantage right because it's the only way all of us are gonna be motivated to reproduce have young and offspring so that the the, the species can survive for another generation and another generation and another generation um, but then it becomes a problem when now through the ego that's all you can't see past you can't see past last you are so lustful that you live for 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 for, for last basically for an example in a in a in a young female who grew up in a household where there was no father figure right during the crucial stages of development in this young girl's life even as an infant there was no masculine energies in the household right this then develops to a to a female who feels incomplete without without a without a partner without a boyfriend without a a male figure in her life a you've met you've met um serial serial daters um, women who can't go through life without being in a relationship, um, dating, being with someone, they feel incomplete, right? And for 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 things like greed, um, greed in 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 adults may stem from someone who a, a an infant and a, a young child who during um crucial stages of development they 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 were able to intuit that there was lack in the in the in the household be it love food whatever it may be but if this child in 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 her life or in his life he is grow he is going to grow up to be an adult who can't see past money and and materialistic things right and they get so greedy that they believe that the best things in life are only deserved by them for some reason. No one else can have good things and and have better things than them. They are so competitive and greedy and and it's all just a, a traumatic response. Um so there's always there's always there's always a, a psychological explanation for why we are the way that we are as adults and it's more than anything it's just that we we we, we just need a therapist more often than not <laughs> we just need a, a therapist um it, 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 it it may not be that there's a, that there is a supernatural um cause for 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 the way that we are not that we or anything you just need a therapist basically in most cases right so so all in all what I'm saying is, if I'm saying anything, um, the, the what we should take away from what we should take away from this whole presentation and this whole um, 
installment of the revolution basement is the first seven years of your life are very crucial they are critical to your development right all the things that happen to you in that stage of your development are so profound that they're gonna tattoo themselves they're gonna give rise to a shadow self and a face and the, the ego that you wear right and the most important thing is to be able to introspect and investigate yourself right so that you can be able to break yourself down be able to see yourself away from yourself and be able to see your 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 shadow self and your ego and your true self right and i won't go into the different techniques that you can you can use but therapy is very powerful um therapy is not a is not a thing for the sick or for the mentally unstable just as you just as you have a doctor for for your teeth you have your a doctor for your eyes you have a, a doctor for for whatever for whatever disease that you may have you need a doctor for your mind because the mind is a very complex complex thing right so we should all all of us should have should have um therapy sessions in our lives right another powerful tool is meditation meditation is not for for indians or for chinese or for whatever meditation is one of the best ways that you can separate yourself your true self from the shadow self and from from your ego and be able to see yourself away from yourself i know it feels like i'm playing with words but it's facts meditation is very powerful right um but more than anything whatever you may choose to in, in order to 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 introspect and understand yourself but it's very important it's something that we should all do otherwise we're gonna go through life um just reacting instead of responding we're gonna go through life as as a victim of our 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 superficial self right so it's important that daily you should set aside enough time to deal with yourself and heal yourself right um yeah man that's about it i hope you you enjoyed this installment um please do like and subscribe right if this is this is if this is content that you want more of and you believe that it has helped you in any way and provided some clarity in, in whatever way do like and subscribe do comment any response and any feedback is welcome is very welcomed so yeah shout out it will not be televised I won't catch it.